Welcome to lesson three of Watercolors with Caroline. As this is uh, recorded in October, we're going to do a fall wagon today. Another lovely photograph by Denise McQuillan of a wagon loaded with hay and corn stalks and pumpkins. So uh, six by eight inches is a great size for this. Get your paints ready and some paper. And hopefully you've drawn this out from my little sketch that I gave to you and let's get painting our fall picture. So here we are we're going to start with the sky and the background let's get one of my previous ones and grab these. Now this was yesterday so yesterday I did it sort of as per the instructions I've written out I did the ultramarine blue in the sky and a little bit of green uh, sort of uh, loose background and I left this all dry. I did wet this bit which I didn't put in my instructions. Now, this was another one I tried wondering whether I should put the fall trees in the background and I thought that was just too much to put in there and the very first one I did I tried to put too much in the background. I ended up having to sort of scrub it all out because there was too much in there so I, I kind of got down to simplifying it. Now, this is the photo by Denise McQuillan that I took it from. And you can see in the background here, there is a lot of detail, lots of trees. And that is just too much for this little, this little painting. Plus, it takes us ages. We'd spend so long trying to put all of that background in. So we're going to leave that out and just focus on the cart today. And... If you want to do your hay bales dry and your uh, corn stalks dry, you will leave those dry right now. But if you want to sort of do them like last week where we did the wet in wet, you can wet them right now. So you, you can choose. Now, I did mine dry yesterday, so I'm going to wet mine today just to show you uh, the different look between the two. And I'm only going to wet where the background is and the hay bales and the corn stalks. I'm only going to wet those bits, this sort of background here. I'm being going to be very careful not to wet the, the wheels. I'm not going to wet the cart because I want to work on those nice and dry. I will today wet these corn stalks because I think I like the wet in wet look a lot better. And I'm sorry, I didn't put that in my notes. I will have to amend them. And I'm going to get some ultramarine blue for the sky. I get a little bit of ultramarine blue. And then I want to make a few sort of out of focus green trees. So I'm gonna get some ultramarine blue now, of course, you can use a green. What I really like to do when I paint is select five or six colors and just use those colors so the whole painting is harmonious. There's no, no other colors introduced. It just pulls everything together. So I'm going to use my Azo yellow, or you can use a cadmium yellow. And I'm going to make a sort of a green, a nice tree a nice darkish tree green I just added a bit more ultramarine to make a darkish tree green and then I need some color for the the hay bale so I'm going to use my bright yellow my azo yellow and I'm going to add some raw sienna or you can use yellow ochre to that and keep it quite yellowy because we're going to add a bit more um, raw sienna and yellow ochre later. So I've got those ready and my my water's kind of soaked into my paper. And I'm going to switch to my my number eight brush. I just um, put all that on with my number 10 brush. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going in with my ultramarine blue and I want most of my background to start with the ultramarine blue. I'm going to put the green on top so again, I'm not going to come right up close to my hay bales, but I'm going to get fairly close, not quite close to that back one there. 
and just take this down to here. Now, when I get down to the dry part, I wash my brush, dry it off a little bit. And with that slightly damp brush, I'm just going to ease that color down to sort of nothing there. If you're getting hard lines, it means you maybe need to, you know, wet your paper a bit more. I'm going to take my ultramarine blue over here. I'm going to be careful around these corn stalks. And you can either leave them dry or have them wet. And down here. And same thing, I've got my slightly damp brush. I'm just going to ease that color down to sort of nothing down here with my damp brush. And I'm going to take that green that I made and just very gently sort of add in some out of focus trees back there. They really don't, you know, they don't have to resemble trees too much. They just need to be sort of, I've got too much light shining on my, my thingy there. And also, I'm going to take that green and I'm going to add a bit of out of focus green over here too. Take it down to the top of the wheel because the wheels are going to be red and it's really nice to have the green against the red. And again, damp brush, just take it down to almost nothing. Now I'm going to get my, grab my Kleenex. And I, I got a little bit close to my hay bale here, which is the danger of having them wet, right? But ultramarine blue lifts off really easily. So I'm just going to a little Kleenex to lift that off. And I'm going into my yellow mix, clean brush because it will look green. And I'm gonna put my yellow mix on my hay bales here. Clean my brush a bit more. Get my brush nice and clean. It's a little bit dirty. A little bit more yellow on the edge. And I'm hoping my yellow will sort of creep out into my blue a little bit and make a fuzzy edge. And I want a slightly smaller brush. I'm going to get my number four. And I want to just sweep up some of these, these corn stalks. Now this is just this is just sort of a first layer for these corn stalks. I'll be putting a lot more color on later. But it can give you a nice soft edge up into your background. I'll be putting a lot more details on those later. And this is mostly my bright azo yellow with a little bit of uh, raw sienna added in. Now, depending on how, how um, wet my blue is, I'm going to try just poking up a little bit of hay into the blue with the point of my brush to see if I can get that effect of the hay sticking out the top of the bale. I think my blue is just dry enough that that might work. And I'm going to get a little bit more raw sienna and just put a little bit more raw sienna in the corn stalks, wet and wet, so that I have a, a wet and wet effect there that will make a nice background for them. If you're doing wet and wet, each layer has to be less wet than the layer before. That way you don't get uncontrolled uh, bleeding. See, I have no uncontrolled bleeding here. That's because the yellow I put in was less wet than the blue and the blue had had a little bit of time to soak in and dry. So it means you can still get a division and at no point has any of this yellow mixed with the blue and made green. 
because it's just the right consistency. If it does mix and make some green, it really doesn't matter because you've got some green in the background. So don't worry. This is really part of your out of focus background. So it's, it's a underpainting almost. And the nice thing about doing it this way and keeping all of this dry is now we can go and work on all of this dry paper without having to go to the hairdryer or anything and, and dry it. We can just keep working um, on the pumpkins and the wheels and the wagon and everything that's that's dry at the moment. And it saves it. That kind of planning saves time, saves drying time. And the thing is, every time you dry your paper artificially, you shrink it a bit more, make it a bit more lumpy quite often, and you dry the paint before it has time to settle into the paper. If you dry it too quickly, it hasn't got time to settle in and get into the grain of the paper. So you don't want, you don't want to be drying it too often or too quickly. I know it's practical when we're doing a class to dry it, but what I do when I'm painting at home is try and plan half dry, half wet, or I will just walk away for an hour and, and let it dry by itself because that's way better for the paper and the paint. Anyway, so we, we've got that down, hopefully. I'll give you a few minutes to work on that. And then our second thing we'll be doing is the orange pumpkins. I'll bring this, this one over. So if you have a look at these pumpkins in the light areas here, and here and here, it's, it sort of shows a bit more yellow. So we're gonna put a yellow base on the pumpkins and then the orange over the top so that you have them looking a bit rounder. And it's kind of nice, like the lights kind of shining here and shining here on, um, look up here. This one is even white here. You could even leave a little bit of white here if you wanted for this one. And look, it's very yellow under the white and then orange on this side. Now, they're quite small, of course, in your little small painting. So you're going to have to use a small brush and be careful. The other thing we're going to put in is there's like uh, some kind of a mum or some kind of autumn plant here and here. And there are some down here, but they're very difficult to see. We're going to put those in with yellow as well and then come around them with the green later. So we're putting in all the light colors. And if you look at the corn stalks, some of them reflect white here and here and here and here, which I find too difficult to do in a small painting like this. I just put that white on later. If you're doing a big painting, it's easier to leave those areas white, but a small one like this, it's just, much too difficult unless you're working with a magnifying glass and a zero 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 brush. We're just trying to do an impression. So I've also gone, the wheels are red, but I've gone more red in the painting just to have a bit more contrast between the red and the green. Just pumped the red up a bit. So our next task is to get a very small brush. I'm going to use my number two and we're going to put all the pumpkins in using the yellow first on the pumpkin and then filling in with orange. Now you have a choice. Um, I have a cadmium orange here, which I don't use very often. I don't like it very much. It's opaque. It's very opaque. But if you just want to use a mixed orange, that's fine. Cadmium orange is fine. Get rid of that little bit of gold. Uh, another orange I have, which I like, is transparent orange because it's transparent. And you can probably see the difference in transparency between the, the cadmium orange and the transparent orange. Those are two good oranges. Another orange is just one you can mix. So you can get a bright yellow, uh, either cadmium yellow, azo yellow, uh, Hansa yellow, transparent yellow, and you can add a little bit of red. I'm going to grab a little bit of cadmium red and just mix it in with that yellow. And just going to mix my own orange. So you've got a, You've got a choice. You can use any of those. And I, of course, also want some yellow. 
just by itself. I'm going to do the, the, the most yellow one first. Let's zoom in even more. So we can see the pumpkins. So first I'm going to put the yellow on the side of the pumpkin that has the, the yellow highlight. And I'm going to get, let's, let's try my, my cadmium orange. I haven't used it for a long time. Let's try it. So it's, it's a nice bright orange. And I'm going to put it on the more shaded side. And I'm going to let it blend into that yellow, just wet in wet. And bring it around because there is some around here. And again, if your orange is less wet than your yellow, it won't bleed into it too quickly. I can always suck up a little bit of the yellow, make a bit more highlight. And I can also add a little bit of uh, a red. I can mix a bit more red in with my orange that I mixed. And just, I'm just gonna add, just gonna dot that little bit of red underneath the pumpkin here. So I'm making it look more round with these three colors, a very red orange, just a medium orange and the yellow. And if you lose a bit of your highlight, just pull it back with a thirsty brush. Now the other one that has the yellow highlight is the one um, next to it here, but I don't want to do that one right now because the two will bleed together and become one. So I have to work on a dry area. And I'm gonna emphasize the yellow and the orange on this one, which isn't emphasized in the photo, but that doesn't matter. I'm gonna put the yellow on the left side here, get my orange, put my orange. See, my orange is a little bit too wet, so I've got to go less wet with the orange. I'm, I'm just mixing up a mixture that's a little less wet and put that on the side that's there's a hay bale right beside it here and I'm going to pull that orange with the tip of my brush into the hay bale so I get a texture on the side of it as if it's behind that hay bale And again, I'm going into my reddish orange mixture, which is not very wet. And I'm gonna dot that down here at the base of this pumpkin. So there's some dark at the base. I know it seems a bit fiddly, but the, the ones that are close up to the viewer, it's nice to give them a bit more shape. As you work on the other ones, you can make them a little bit more flat. It doesn't matter because you just need a few close up that, um, that give you the, the shape and then you could just add in the other ones. This is right next to this one, but I'm gonna leave a little tiny white space so they don't mix wet and wet for now. And I'm gonna go over to this one back here. I'm gonna go a bit more reddish orange back here. Again, leave a little tiny white space so they don't mix wet and wet. And can you see where I pulled this one into the hay bale to give that, that texture, which will become the hay bale afterwards. I'm gonna work around the pumpkin so that I'm working in dry areas. And I'm using a variety of my oranges. I'm using sometimes my cadmium orange, sometimes that transparent orange, and sometimes the one I mixed up with the yellow and the red. I've left a dry line through this one because my corn stalk goes in front of it. And again, I can do that, pulling it into the hay bale here with the tip of my brush because it's behind a hay bale. Going up to the wagon. There's one here. Now my, 
my paint here is just still slightly damp, so I have to be a little bit careful. May not be able to finish off my last pumpkin, which is back here. I might have to wait a little bit until the wagon is dry. That's okay, I'll put this one in. I'm just going to push this up. I think this one's starting to dry enough that I can put this one in too. It's always tricky working wet and wet next to another object, but if you're really careful, you don't have your paint too wet, you can usually manage okay. Get that one in. This was the first one I did, so I should be able to go into the one behind it. Okay, that was the one that was quite light on the left side. Having things really nice and light that like that really gives the appearance of sunshine and a bright day, having the lovely bright highlights. And then at the very end, we're going to contrast that with the lovely dark shadows under the wagon. So it'll really make everything pop when we're finished. I've got those in. Um, this one up here, I, I just got to wait till the hay bale's a bit drier. And I can also put in the flowers that I was talking about. Now, most of those are kind of yellow. And I want to use my nice, really bright Azo yellow. Whatever you've got for your brightest yellow, is good and we don't have to be fussy about these flowers i'm going to do there's a thing of flowers here i'm just going to do some dots and i will go between them with some green when they're dry dots of yellow and of course there will be some orangey shadows on those flowers so with the tip of my little tiny number two brush I'm just going to add a, a few dots of the orange in there. And we have another, uh, another big sort of bouquet of flowers here. Same thing. I'm going to do quite a lot of yellow dots here, which while I'll come around with green later. A few little orange bits in there, just to pull everything together. And there's a few down here too. You can only really see the greenery of these ones down here, but I want to put a little bit more color. Again, a little, little bit of orange. Now it doesn't look like much at all. It won't look like much till we get the, the green around those bouquets of flowers. What it does do, I'll pull back. It gives a nice flow of color coming from, there'll, there'll be an orange pumpkin here. So we've got a nice flow of color that comes in in a sort of a S bend all the way through the painting. And like I said, the colors we've used, the azo yellow, the um, orange, the, the raw sienna, they're all throughout the whole painting and they will be even more on the um, hay bales and things. So it's all about keeping it harmonious. Now we can still work on the cart, even though all of these things are wet. I'm gonna give you a few minutes if you are painting to just catch up with the pumpkins. Um, I will pause for a minute. I mustn't forget to, right, there we go. Oh, I'm gonna add some actual phthalo green to my mix here that I just made. So I've got my actual mix plus a bit of phthalo green. That's okay. Over here, I have my um, ultramarine blue from my sky. And I'm going to mix a bit of phthalo green with that because I want a shadowy green color with a bit more blue in it for the darker areas. See If I add a bit of ultramarine blue, it's going to darken that up. If I add a little bit of burnt sienna, 
just at the corner and darken it up a little bit more if I need it a little bit darker. Not all of it, just a corner if I need some shadow. And I also would like to get, there's an effect here where the paint's wearing off of the wood here. You can put some raw sienna in wet in wet with the phthalo green and get this kind of uh, worn look. So let's try that. Let's, um, again, we're not, we're not using a great range of colors. We're still gonna be using the raw sienna, the ultramarine blue, the burnt sienna, which we're gonna use throughout. We're just introducing the phthalo green now. So I want some raw sienna as well. And I'm gonna work that wet and wet. I'm gonna go one plank at a time because I don't want the raw sienna to dry up while I'm working on it. Put the raw sienna on first. It doesn't matter how patchy this looks because the wagon is very patchy and worn. What I do want to do, uh, the corn stalks here are overlapping the back of the wagon here. So I want to very carefully do some negative painting behind those corn stalks that are overlapping. And then I'm going to painting one plank at a time, let that viridian green or phthalo green or your mix, just mix with that raw sienna in a patchy fashion. And the back of the wagon is darker than the side. So we can start with the back quite strong. And then I'll work on the plank underneath. Just because I don't want the raw sienna to dry before I get, I get to it. Otherwise, I'm going to have just clumps of dry raw sienna. So I'm going to put some raw sienna here. Wash my brush. Get my dark green mix, my Viridian green mix. Again, I'm going to paint behind those corn stalks and around these flowers. Just letting it blend wet in wet with the, the raw sienna. Sorry, sometimes I have to stop talking just to concentrate on my painting. And under those two panels that obviously come down at the back of the wagon, there's a um, part at the bottom. And we've got the back in. Now we can either put the dark shadow on now or later. It's totally up to your comfort as a painter. What I'm doing now is I'm dipping into that one that I made with the ultramarine blue and the green. And I'm just putting a little bit in here where, it, where the shadow from the corn stalks is. If your paint's wet enough, you can drop a little bit of color in like this. And it depends on how comfortable you are doing that. If you're not comfortable doing that, wait till it dries and then do your um, shadowing. That's fine. Now, if you look at the, I'm just gonna move this so I don't smudge it. If you look at the photo, this is where I've put the ultramarine blue shadow where it's very dark here and I might put more later. Remember, I've gone between these corn stalks here and again, I might do a bit more later, but come over to this side of the wagon and it's almost white right here. So we have to be very careful to have dark here, rough here and lighter going along this side to have that contrast and to make it look three dimensional. So to keep mine nice and white on this end, I'm going to just wet that end here. I don't quite know what I've got sticking out there. I don't know what I thought I was putting there. I might have to fix that later. 
So I've wet that bit and I'm going to add more water now to my my Viridian uh, Thalo Green mix. I'm going to add some water which will lighten it up. I don't want it as dark. I'm lightening up the pigment. And I'm going to leave a barrier here between the, this one and the side so they don't suddenly flood together with water. I'll start at the darker end here, a little bit more pigment. And go down the side of the planks. And as I come to the wet bit, I dabbed off my brush a bit so I don't have as much paint on it. Dabbed it off a bit more. And I want to come up to almost, almost white here. Do you know what I mean? I left something here that I have no idea why I left that there. Having an odd moment, obviously. Right, same for this side. I'm going to start here. Doesn't matter that um, I don't have the division between the two sides right now. I'll put that in with dark paint later. Um, these wheels are dry. You have to come very carefully around these wheels. Very carefully. A little step. And again, wash my brush, dry it off, and just pull this end out with a damp brush so I don't have as much pigment at this end of the cart. I'm just going to add a little bit more carefully. Um, there's going to be shadow behind this wheel anyway. I'm going to get a little bit of that blue and green paint. And I can see right at the top of the cart here, it's a bit darker. So it's still wet enough, I can add a little bit of dark there. And then you have the contrast of lighter at this end, darker at this end. Give it a kind of three-dimensional look. We don't have any of the shadow on yet, though, and that's really going to help um, give it more of a look. What I am getting is I'm getting a bit of a, a bloom here where the bottom the bottom half of the cart was wetter than the top, so I'm getting paint running back. So I have to quickly fix that before I get more of a bloom happening. Not a good thing to get. And the reason that happened was this paint I put on the bottom was wetter than the paint I had on the top. So if you see that happening, you need to sort of Fix it straight away with a little bit more paint before it dries. If it's dry, if it dries like that, then you can work on it when it's dry to scrubbing it out a little bit. Nice thing is it's very rough wood on the wagon, so we can give that look to it. Okay, so we've got to let that green dry before we do the, the wheels in red. Otherwise, we're going to get the red flowing into the green. But while that's happening, we can put a lot of this um, corn, a lot of these corn stalks on and um, the hay bales, all that kind of thing. So for the corn stalks, you're going to want a nice bright yellow and some raw sienna to put those on. And I'm going to use a um, a, a script liner brush. I'm going to use my uh, number two script liner so I can get nice thin, nice thin lines. So let's get and clean water. I'm going to put my green water over to the side, out of my way, because my green water is going to affect everything if I get it in there. And then a nice clean palette so that I can get some nice bright colors. And let's grab a really clean brush as well. As soon as you move towards yellow, you have to really make sure things are clean or you're just going to get dirty yellows. I'm going to get some lovely bright 
Okay, so yellow. And I have a light raw sienna and a dark one. I'm going to get both. This one is my raw sienna light by Daniel Smith. Or if you have yellow ochre, that's fine too. It's very similar to uh, raw sienna. And then I have a just a regular raw sienna, which is just slightly darker. And I might do a little bit of um, burnt sienna shadows while this is still wet. Oops, that's not burnt sienna, that's my green. Clean that mess up. Okay, burnt sienna. There we go. Put that there. So I've got all my yellows and and colors ready for the corn stalks mixed ready get my brush and I start with always start with the lightest color which is your yellow and I'm going to with this lovely liner brush I'm going to pull the lovely thing is what I like about the liner brush is you can do what I just did you can pull and you can curve with it and get those lovely curved shapes in one, one kind of pull of your brush. And you, you won't be able to do every corn stalk exactly as you see in this picture. You just need to have a few of them kind of like the shapes you see in the picture and then the rest you just use that model of shape to do the rest. There's a few that come, I'm gonna go into my medium, my, my light. There's one that comes right in front of the hay bale, which I want to definitely put in. One that comes down the side of it. So get the main ones in, and then you can sort of make up some of the others. This one that curls around here. And the relationship between, what I'm looking for really is the relationship between these corn stalks and other things in the pictures. The relationship between this one and the wheel. So I need a space like this and it needs to point kind of towards the wheel. And then I'm looking at these ones that come in front of the hay bale. Uh, this one that comes out here. If I get those in, like this one that comes out in front here, these ones that come close to the wheel, this one that comes in front of the hay bale, then I don't have to worry too much about the others. They can fill in the spaces. So I'm going to my light uh, raw sienna. And there's those two that are overlapping. I'm not going to go into those yet because my wagon's probably... Um, Probably still wet, so I'll get too much bleeding happening. I'm going to my regular raw sienna now, which is darker than the light one. I've got a hair in my picture. And the thing to be careful about is if you have the light ones in there, sometimes it's kind of easy to paint over them as you paint the other colors in. And it's um, a good idea to try not to do that. See, I've got these light ones showing here. So I kind of want to paint behind those so I don't obscure them. So I still have some light ones. I'm definitely not going to do all of the cornstalk painting right now. I'm just putting in putting in a bit of it. And I'm going to go into the burnt sienna, the darker colors. And where they all kind of come in here. I'm going to put a bit of dark. We can go much darker later. 
I'm going to get a little bit of that in. Okay, that gives us a good a good start. And then I might want to have a little bit more, a little bit more bright yellow, just coming up some of these ones. A bit of bright yellow in. And the next thing we want to do is get the rest of the hay bales in too. They're looking okay and we've got the right colors on our palette. So there's a hay bale right here under this pumpkin. And I'm gonna start with my bright yellow. And I'm gonna work wet in wet with the, the raw sienna. I'll, I'll go light to dark. So I'm going into my light raw sienna. For, so the bottom of the hay bale. And as I get to the, get my pointy brush, as I get to the edges, it's gonna pull those out with my pointy brush at the edge. I'm going to my regular raw sienna, which is a bit darker. I'm going to use my pointy brush to put a bit of texture in there at the bottom. Now under the um, pumpkin, the shadow, I have to wait a bit to put that on. I'll put it all on at once. And behind that, there are the green plants. So, um, I'm going to go to the hay bale that's back here. And there's one back here too. Not as much detail in those. I'm just putting those on in a regular raw sienna. I'm going to add some green later for the plants. And take my thin brush and just poke out the edges a little bit. And all behind here, there's a little bit of hay bale poking through here. I'm going to put that in with the green later. There too. Now, they're not finished yet. There will be more to them. Um, like this one's going to have some... I've got my burnt sienna now. This is going to have some texture with my... I'm using my thin brush where the string goes around them here. It's pulling them, pulling them in and making it darker where the string is. Now you can do that when it's dry or you can do that wet in wet. Both work just fine. Just depends how comfortable you are working wet in wet or whether you prefer to work dry. Sometimes it's much easier to work dry. You have more control. Get my teeny weeny brush. And I mentioned that there's a, some shadow under the pumpkin. Now here's my, here's my burnt sienna, which is pretty orangey brown. Under the pumpkin, it's a bit in shadow. So I'm gonna take a little bit of ultramarine blue and I'm just gonna darken up that burnt sienna a little bit so it's not as bright. Little tiny brush. And under this pumpkin, there is shadow. So if the, the yellow that I put on is almost dry, pretty much is dry, I can put that, that shadow that makes the pumpkin sit right down on the on the hay bale and I needed that little bit of ultramarine blue in there 
to make it seem like it's in shadow and not just the same color as the the shadow I have on the front. I'm going to get a little bit more of that shadow color and tip it in just under the pumpkin. Otherwise, it's not going to sit flat on that hay bale. This one too. And of course, behind these, it's really dark, dark green flowers and stuff. So, and behind these corn stalks, it's going to be, we don't have to do that now, definitely, but I just want to show you ahead of time. It's going to get some dark green. I'll show you ahead of time how we're going to add the shadows between these corn stalks back here and behind behind these, behind these pumpkins and so forth. Once you get all these darks in, things start to make more sense. Once you get the dark greens and the dark shadows in, we, we, we don't have to do that right now. I want to give you some indication of where we're going with this. We're not going to leave it all light and bright. And that's what will make things stand out. And again, we're not using any colors that we haven't used. We're still using the burnt sienna, the ultramarine blue, a little bit of the thalo green. I'm putting a little bit of burnt sienna just back here. The shadows. And I'll come back to a lot of it later to put more shadows in. You can only do so much shading in, in wet paint. It, it won't... Um, it won't stay dark, it will dissipate into the wet paint and, and lighten up. So at some point you've got to let all this dry and go back with the shadows when it's dry. Now we've got a couple more hay bales that we need to do as well while we have all those lovely hay bale colors there. So I've got these ones up here. And again, I want a sort of soft look to the top. So I'm just going to just gently wet the tops of these two so I got a soft look and I want my raw sienna to do the sides of this of the hay bales so I'll put the raw sienna on the side and again we're not we're not done these this is this is just the second layer And there's a few hay bales in this cart. We'll start with these ones. And I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to that raw sienna because uh, this hay bale back here is a bit darker. Uh, right behind this one here, it's a bit darker. So we need to go a bit darker there. And then it lightens up a bit. So I'm washing my brush, getting my lighter color and pulling it out into the lighter color here. Um, I'm just getting my, my thin liner brush. Uh, just want to pull my thin liner brush out into those sort of random hay, um, stalks. of hay. I just want to add those in with my very thin brush. I'm going to my raw sienna, not as dark up this end of the hay bale. Again, I'm a very thin brush. I'm just going to pull some of those, those stalks out. And I get a little bit more texture going here by pushing the paint with my brush. 
dabbing on a bit more paint. And as this one starts to dry, I can dab on a bit more paint and get a little bit more texture. And this end is very, very light. The hay bale here is very, very light too. So I um, I want my very, very light watery yellow for this one here. And right here too, it's very light. So again, my very light watery yellow And while that's still wet, I'm going to use my raw sienna on the darker side, just here. And a little bit of, a little bit of burnt sienna down here in this corner. Just dotting it in with my brush. And then my very light yellow, wet and wet light yellow comes over here. We don't need a lot of detail, just, it's more the value, the value of the hay. I'm gonna get my burnt sienna again. And wet in wet, I'm just going to get the shadow that's just in here between a couple of the bales here. Let's work that wet in wet there. And that's the end of another hay bale there. If you wait till the paint's starting to dry up, you can add a few dots and you'll get that texture happening where it bleeds in. Um, the one under here is quite dark under there. So I want to add a tiny, tiny bit of the blue to the burnt sienna. And I'm gonna put the one in under here that's, that's darker. A little bit of blue to that burnt sienna. And there is quite a bit of dark shadow here. I'm just going to dot in while that paint's starting to dry up. It's all about value rather than anything else. And then we just need to let that dry now. I have no idea what happened here. I'm going to have to get my um, Kleenex and my paint and try and fix that mistake I made there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some ultramarine blue on there and agitate it into the other paint. I don't know what I, I don't know why I did that, I have no idea. And then I want to get a little bit of green, just the tree green. And I'm going to put a few trees back here and try and get rid of that odd little shape that I um, I got in there for unknown reasons. And because I won't be working wet and wet with these trees, um, I'm going to have to use a wet brush to soften them up a little bit. I'm going to have them um, down here will be um, grass and path. So I've got paint dripped on it too. So I don't have to worry about that too much at the moment. It will, it will blend in. The path will come, path's going to come along here. The edge of the path comes to the edge of the um, wheels here, sort of just put that line in. And this is all gonna be grass back here. I think it comes under the truck and the path sort of goes out here. Oh. 
but I don't want to put that in until last because the next thing we sort of want to work on is the, the red wheels, getting those in. And we'll look at the, we'll look at my painting and the picture. So the next thing we will be working on is um, putting in these wheels. And I just like to make them more red than the photograph, just for a bigger contrast between the green and the red. So we're gonna use cadmium red and um, water to make it lighter. And if you look at the top of the rims here, almost white at the top of the rims and on the edge of the rims, white, and on the edge of some of these, um, forgotten what they're called, but almost white. So we have to be careful again to get that contrast between light and dark. We'll come around with a darker red to put in these shadows after the first red is dry. If you look here, uh, this shadow, if you isolated it, would be like a dark green shadow. You've got reflection from the grass. We're not gonna go quite that literal, but I have mixed my red with the phthalo green to make a very dark greenish red. And like I say, my red is much brighter, I think just for artistic composition. This one I didn't do quite as bright. I prefer it a bit, a bit more, a bit more red. So, and it's up to you if you want your wheels to look very faded or if you want them a bit more red. But I'm gonna use a cadmium red. If you don't have a cadmium red, any bright red will do. Any bright red is fine. If you only have a, like a lizard and crimson, just add a little bit of yellow to it to um, brighten it up a little bit. Now I have dripped, dripped um, paint on here. Oh good, now I got green all over it. Oh wonderful. Yeah, it's got a clean, clean Kleenex. I'm not having much luck with this one. I'll get some of that green off of there. Green, um, phthalo green stains. So I'm gonna throw that Kleenex out. I'm gonna have green grass. Anyway, let's get the, the red mixed up. Let's get to space for the red. I right, get a nice clean space. Again, if you have any of these other colors mixing in with the red or the yellow, it's really gonna dull it down. Um, this is my cadmium red, nice and bright. And another one is a good bright one's Pirole Red, that's good. And if you don't have that, like I said, our mixer, um, if you only have like a, a Lizarin Crimson, I've got one here, you mix that with a bit of yellow. And you'll get a brightish, you'll get a brightish red. It won't be as bright as a cadmium, but it'll still be fairly bright. And a small brush. And I've got my number two. And I want to, with clean water, I just want to wet the tip of the rim here to keep it light and to have a fading from light to darker red. And then my red, I want to dilute some of it. So just over to the corner here, I'm gonna add a couple of little bits of water. So I have a, a little bit of diluted red here. It's not as strong. Uh, and then we're gonna come down from where I put that water on. And as you come down the wheel, you can get a little bit stronger with your color because as you come to the base of the wheel, it's coming very close to the ground and it gets quite dark. We'll put the, the shadow layer on afterwards. And then you're gonna just sort of bring it around. 
Now, if it's a little bit light, you can go back while it's still wet and add a little bit of color. What you want to have is, you want to have that fading to almost white here. So I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of that red on my brush and just gently fade in a little bit more up there at the top of the wheel. You have to go very gentle when you're doing this. Now it stays, the, the rim stays kind of white until you come around here and it sort of reddens and then it lightens again. And really what makes these wheels look good is having this contrast between the light and the dark. And this is just our first layer. Now the other place that there's some red is on these sides of the cut. And you will be going over green, but that's okay because they are very much in shadow right here. So it doesn't matter if they are sort of showing up dark, very dark red because of the green underneath. Another one here. There's a, some kind of a red under the wagon there. But you can see, even over the top of the green, they just show up a dark red. Now we want to um, do the hub, the middle of the wheel. And same thing, the top, do it all in, in one piece. The top is quite light, so I'm just going to wet the top, the hub. And then I'm going to start from the bottom. And the center is sort of a gray color, but I'm doing it red for now. And I'm gently going to come up and meet that wet part at the top and just ease it in there. And there's an inside to the hub. Inside here is dark. Inside here is all dark. And here we're going to go darker soon. And then we need to do the spokes. That's what they're called. They're called spokes. I knew it would come to me. I'm going to start at the top with this one, which is quite dark. And the thing to do is to leave a white, dry, unpainted edge to your spoke. The one underneath it is much lighter, so I'm going to add a lot of water to my paint. Um, the spoke here is much lighter. And as long as you leave that, that dry edge, you're going to have a division between your spokes. Go to this next one here. Again, leave your dry edge. The dry edge will prevent any of your paint from mixing with the with the other spoke and it will make each spoke look individual and another one next to it here also don't forget that light rim you're not painting that light rim either that's why you need a very small pointed brush so you can get into these areas and leave these white unpainted areas by using just the, the point of your brush. I'm gonna come down to this one. Very easy to lose your way when doing this, so be careful. That's where it helps to actually go online and find the photograph. I'm not supposed to send you the photograph by the rules of the group, which I find a little bit restricting, but I don't want to break the rules at some it's a really good resource. So this is a very, very light red, this one. 
And the one underneath is very, very light. So I'm just adding a bit of water to my paint. They're extremely light, these two spokes here, and then they're gonna get darker again. I think, I really think that these wagon wheels with these spokes are really what make these, this painting if you, you know, if you're very careful how you paint them. And this one's dark. Again, there's a, a light rim to the wheel that you don't paint. And then this one. This one and this one. These are further away, so you can't see quite as much detail. And behind these wheels, later we're going to put in grass and shadow. So at the moment you just have white space, but there will be there will be more at the end. This one's pretty light. Oh, and I forgot, I forgot something here. Inside here is part of the wheel that the spokes are attached to. I forgot to put that in. Well, this one's a really light one. And then the one underneath is dark. Dark, dark, dark. And that one over there is light. Phew. Now we need to just let those dry a little bit before we put the shadows on. But I have a bit more to finish up on the cart here. I'm going to take the Thalo green, the ultramarine blue, and some burnt sienna to make a very dark, very dark color to add the details to the cart. 
the burnt sienna takes takes it down nice and dark helps you get dark now the back of these parts of the cart a little bit more burnt sienna it's still a little bit bright grab a little bit more burnt sienna uh, right at the end of these planks here is pretty dark so that's why i mixed up a much darker color and under here it's in shadow there is a division of course between the, the planks on the cart that you need to put in and um, there are some pieces that sort of hold the cart together here you don't have to go into a huge amount of detail just having a few lines helps to make it look more like a cart. There's some sort of little chain thing here that's hooking the top of the cart on. And there's a, of course, a division between these planks. And there's a shadow from the wheel, the shadow from this part here. There is a, a step coming down here, a little step for you to stand on. All those just, those little tiny details start to bring it, bring it to life. There's some um, nails or something, a little crack in the wood, another crack in the wood here, nails. And um, that shadow underneath the cart, you can't really see much of what's going on underneath the cart, but you can put a bit of just dark shadow. I'm just going to get a slightly bigger brush and go for my number four brush and darken up this area just here because it is really, really dark here. Behind these corn stalks, so I'm gonna put that in. And just, I'm gonna smooth that in with a damp brush while I've just washed, dried a little bit on my sponge, just smooth that in. If you go horizontally with your strokes, as you smooth it in, it's going to look like wood grain. And even a bit of dry brush, I've dried my brush off, take it across. The top of that plank of wood is quite yellow, kind of reflecting the hay. So I'm going to leave that white for the moment and add some yellow when this is dry. It's very, very dark at the bottom here. And we're going to have shadow underneath. So while your red is drying up, you can put some of those little details on. And let me have a look and have a little think. And um, we've got some shadow to put on the wheels. We've got some grass to put under the wheels. We've got some path to put around here and then some dark greens to put in. We've got a little bit to do. We've got um, 35 minutes, so we don't have to rush. Also, um, I need a little bit more detail on my hay bale as well. I need to get a dry brush. Dry brush is one where you sort of get some paint on it. I'm going to get some burnt sienna mix on it. I've got some burnt sienna mix on my brush. I'm going to dab it off on my sponge and then dab it off on a bit of paper. So, so I'm getting not too much paint coming off of it dab it till it's and now it's almost dry I'm going to kind of scrub it onto this hay bale it's still even a bit wet still I'm going to dab it off a bit more and kind of scrub it on here and it's going to make that kind of texture that's a dry brush texture Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going. I'm mixing a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make a gray brown color. Let me show you that. 
So I've got the ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt sienna, a gray brown color, and dab it off on my sponge and my towel. And then I'm gonna dab it on the paper. Look, until I get that dry brush mark, not much paint on there. And then I'm going to lightly, still lots of paint on there, lightly scrub it on my, my hay bales, get a bit more texture happening. I'm going to dab it even more on my paper to get, get a bit more paint off. Has to be almost, almost perfectly dry. And then you can start getting a little bit of texture. doesn't have to be perfect. It's just going to give that look, that look of the hay bale. Again, okay, same with this one. Dab off it. It's still got loads of paint on there. My goodness, and dab off again. And these ones back here. That, that just gives it a little bit more. You can fiddle with it later and put even a bit more if you need to. But sometimes you just get need to give an indication and the brain will do the rest. People will look at it and they'll figure it out. I'm just getting some actual, just pure burnt sienna now. Again, dabbing it all off, getting my brush really dry. And I'm, I'm using this bit of paper to really get the paint off. And... Um, it's getting a little bit more. This one has quite a bit of dark just here. And there are lines down here. These are not, um, I asked my husband what these were because he's lived and worked on farms. And he said it's where the cutter has cut, actually cut this bale, these lines. It's not from string or anything. These ones, they have definitely got, you know, they definitely got string here that's pulling them in. But this one's got cut marks. Whether you put those on or not, it's totally up to you. I, I have a hard time not just painting what I see. It's a bad habit I have that I, just, I can't seem to not paint it if it's there. You don't always have to paint it if it's there. Don't fiddle too much. I think I've fiddled enough now. I think that's plenty of fiddling um, and that's that's enough. Uh, I do know that this pumpkin has a bit more shadow on it. All of these have a bit more. I might add a bit more shadow to those. All of that fiddling has given time for that. I'm touching that red paint. It's dry enough. I can touch it and not smudge it. You shouldn't really do that, by the way. You shouldn't really put your finger on it. Um, I'm being a bit bad. Usually the back of your finger is better. It's not as oily. But, um, Right, we're going to put some shadow on these wheels now. So I have my have my cadmium red and grab it from here. And if I just put red over red, I'm not really going to get a shadow look to it. I'm just going to get a thicker red, which isn't really going to look like a shadow. But if I add the complementary color, which is the thalo green to the red, I'm going to get a browned down red that's going to give me a shadow color and not only that these wheels are reflecting the grass and have a greeny red look to them the other color i'm going to use um, is the ultramarine blue over this side because some of the shadow looks kind of a purpley color so if i put the ultramarine blue over this side with the red i get a sort of a purpley color now these are our two good shadow colors for the red to make it darker and again little tiny brush i need my Number two brush, and we're going to look at where the shadows are. So of course the top of the wheel has no shadow, but we want a smooth transition. So again, a little tiny bit of water. And then I'm going to, for the front wheel, get the, the blue purpley mix and bring that down for the shadow on this wheel. And as it comes further down, I'm going to switch to the, the greeny brown mix, the one with the green in it, because on the photograph I'm looking at, the wheel is reflecting the, 
the grass a little bit. I'm adding a little bit more green and red to the to my mix. It's come. It's really dark. That's why I was adding a little bit more. It's it's really dark down by the the bottom here by the grass. So just adding a little bit more dark here. And then I want to blend, not a wet brush or I'm going to get a, a run back, but just a very damp brush. Just going to blend that up. And the wheels are worn, so it doesn't matter if you get a bit of um, brush mark showing. And the hub of the wheel, it's actually a greeny color they've painted this kind of bit I think green here where the kind of bolt is so let's put that in first and you can see the divisions between the um I think it's probably a metal hub anyway you can see you can see the lines there we'll put those in first and then we'll put a bit of shadow in afterwards between these spokes is very dark we put that dark in, that's the green and the red mixed together. And then we're going to shade some of the spokes. So some of them I don't want as dark as others. This one here is the blue and the red. I'm putting on and you might say, well, what's the point of putting the red underneath if you're going to put the bluey red over the top? The point is that the paint is transparent or translucent and you see the red underneath even though you're putting the darker color on the top but if you just put the dark color on all you read is brown wheels or purple wheels you don't see that red coming through so you have to have the red underneath for it to read as red wheels in shadow otherwise it just won't and also you're going to be using shadow in some places. And then I got just a damp brush and you're not going to be using it in other places. For instance, this, this spoke here just has shadow at the back where the other one ref, um, shades it just here. So there's not, there's not shadow over the whole spoke. Each one has a different amount of shadow. So, uh, this one is very, this is a very dark shadow and this one not so dark. So I mix a little bit more water with my paint. And then this one's barely got any shadow. So we don't need to do much to this one. We can just leave it red. Doesn't have much shadow just towards the middle here. This one, almost no shadow. We can leave that one. Uh, this one here has the shadow from the top spoke and it's a hard shadow so I don't need to do any blending I can just put I can just put the hard shadow in no blending needed I want the blue and red for the next shadow just have to mix a little bit more up so this one here again has a a hard shadow from the spoke above it comes down here and around here. No blending needed. The hard shadow makes it look real and makes it look um, like the material it's made of, like wooden spokes. So this one's quite dark here and so is the next one. I think for me, the, the most interesting part of this painting is the, is the cartwheels, how the shadows fall on these spokes. And it's inside the rim is dark.
here too. Very dark. And here, and there's a shadow falling over this one. So can you see how now that I've got some of those uh, hard and of course the soft shadow where it's round, how it's starting to really take shape. Now, the hub also has, because the hub is round, it also has a, a quite a soft shadow. And I'm curving my brush as I go around painting that shadow. And I'm going to get my damp brush and I'm just going to soften the edge just a little bit. And then we have to do the same thing for the back wheel, but the back wheel is more green. It reflects more green from the uh, wagon and the grass. So I've got the green and red mix for uh, this one. And I haven't wet the top of this one yet because it's much smaller and further away and I need a lot more control. And it's quite dark. I'm gonna take this down here. Be very, very careful with the tip of my brush. And now I'm going to get my wet brush and a little bit of water and I'm just gonna soften that top in just very, very carefully. You have to be careful when you're putting water on paint because it can easily get away from you. And I want to do the inside of the rim. This is the, the green and red mix. Thalo green and red make a, a lovely gray and a dark mix. It's a, it's a good color for that. Thalo green is a great color for mixing, for mixing other colors. You don't hardly ever use it on its own except for something like this cart that was painted, actually painted that color from the get go. I put some of these shadows on these spokes. I'm going to go a little bit quicker with this one. It's smaller and you kind of get the idea of what I was talking about. So I'm going to fill them in quite quickly. And when things are far away, you don't need to fuss as much with the detail. Sometimes you might look back and the paint may have uh, lightened up a bit and you might just need to add a little bit more, a little bit more dark if it's lightened up a bit too much. There. Now, we're going to put some light green grass on that in just a moment, but I think we can get the path color on before we do that. And it doesn't matter if the two mix together, that's okay. So for the path color, I'm just, let me just make sure I check the right color that I was using. Of course I've lost my other sheet of notes. We're gonna use the ultramarine blue, the raw sienna and the cadmium red, colors that we've been using, of course, to make a warm path color. So let's start with, this is, this is my wheel rim color that I had here. No need to really get rid of that. It's gonna go in with our path color nicely. So I'm gonna start with a bit of ultramarine blue, tiny little bit, quite a bit of raw sienna because it's a warm colored path. So some raw sienna, a little bit of my cadmium red And a little bit more ultramarine blue. What we want is a warm gray for the path. 
a little bit of ultramarine blue, perhaps. And a touch more red. Now I'm going to add some water to that. We're going to lighten it up a little bit. Add a bit of water to it. And then grab a piece of paper and test it. See what it looks like. Mm. I'm, I'm looking, what I'm looking to make is um, this color here. So let's, I'm going to add a touch more cadmium red. I'm going to paint it near the edge of my paper here. And then I'm going to lay it down next to my photograph. And I think that looks pretty close, close enough. Uh, it's this whole, this whole path that is under the wagon. So we basically when you're mixing grays and dark colors, you're using complements. The blue and the red and the raw sienna are complementary colors and opposites of each other. And when you mix the opposites, you will get a gray. We get a light gray by watering it down. I want a bigger brush. I'm going my number 10 because I want to get kind of want to get this on fairly quickly. I don't want to fuss with the gray path too much. I'm going to turn my page because it's it's easier for me to paint. And I'm going to start over here and paint sort of behind these pumpkins and hay bales and so forth. We can put shadows on top of this path. I'm not going to put the all the um, divisions between the flagstones. I'm just going to get a, a very quick down and dirty path in there. I don't even really want this strong line here. I'm going to take my wet brush and just kind of soften that, that line a bit. I might put a few green trees in in a moment. So we've got that one there. And pull that back into the into the corn stalks. Place you have to be a little bit careful is going under the wagon and around the corn stalks. And of course, between the spokes of the wheels. So use a brush with a good point. That's why I like round brushes. You get a nice good point so that you can actually go around those corn stalks and not paint them gray. We're going to have to go between the the wheel, the hub and the spokes. We're going to have to go between them too. Give them a chance to dry first. Um, it's going to be gray path back here. Again, if, if your um, wheels are still wet, don't go between them. No, a little bit back here. I'm going to have to be really careful doing because I got to go between those. I can go between. See all this, um, all these sort of corn leaves here. I'm going to just poke that color between them to get some shadow between them. And then I'm going to switch to a little tiny number two brush to do a little bit of detail. Now mine's dry enough to go between them. First of all, I'm going to go in this little, little space here. And then I got to go between those spokes. Being careful not to go over any of the white space that you've left. That's why you need a little brush to get in there. And you can't really put this color on first because you would lose all of your, you'd lose all of those white edges if you put this color on first. It would all kind of get out of control on you. I mean, you could put it on first, but you might have to come back with some white to fix it all up. And we're going to get that, that kind of that warm, beigey gray color on. It's quite light, it's diluted with water. And the last thing we want to do 
is have this nice bright grass next to the red wheels. So I'm going to go back to my, my yellow I've got over here, my Azo yellow, grab some of that. And just a tiny bit of my phthalo green into that. Not too much. Just want to make a nice bright grass color. Might want to make a little bit more of it, a little bit more yellow, a bit more green. There we go. Big brush, nice big brush. Because you don't want to fiddle. A big brush stops you from fiddling about and um, gets your paint on nice and quickly. I'm just going to look at my photo. My In my photo, the grass goes up here. I'm going to take it up here. Okay, you can still see that mistake I made at the beginning there. Maybe I should invent something at the end of the wagon for, for that. Who knows? Let's see. Okay, we're going to get that on nice and bright. On that corner up. I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to that color. See how quickly that darkens it up. And to get some texture in the grass, I'm going to add wet in wet that, that darker green. Oops, I went right over. I'm being very sloppy today. I'm getting overconfident. This is about the fifth one I've painted of these. I'm not, not um, being careful, am I? A bit of dark back here. And you see, the more I just sort of just put little dabs of that uh, darker green in, it gives a, it gives a grass texture. Not too much. You've got to leave uh, some of the, the green showing. Look at what I got here. See, really being sloppy today. I got a big run back into my wet path there. Definitely overconfident and sloppy today. I'll fix that in a minute. Try not to do what I did there. Maybe wait for your path to dry. I've got a hair on there. Get that hair off of there. And then, you know, that's what happens if you paint without allowing drying time in between. Really, if, if I was painting properly, I'd go away for an hour or so and let everything dry really properly. And if you're painting at home, you know, do that. Let it dry for a bit of time. Pause the video and um, take a break and uh, just let things dry naturally. Or you can use a hairdryer. It's, um, that's okay to use a hairdryer. I am, I am going to use a hairdryer because I just want to do the finishing touches without having um, any major accidents like that one. I want to show you how to put the shadows on. Now yours is probably too wet to put the shadows on right now, unless you do a hairdryer too. I'm just going to dab that up a little bit. Um, but I want to put the shadows under the cart and the shadows around the pumpkins before we finish up for today. So I'm just going to pause. I'm going to um, pause and mute for a minute to just um, get the the paint dry. I had a bit of a quick dry with the hairdryer there because I want to try and get to the finishing touches uh, before we run out of time today. And you probably won't be able to keep up with me at this point. Uh, you might just have to watch him and come in later. The reason I don't like using a hairdryer um, too much is because it shrinks the paper very, very quickly. And as it shrinks quickly, it pulls away from the tape, like it melts the tape and pulls away from the tape, which means that then you get a buckle in that area, whereas natural drying doesn't, it doesn't do that. Now the shadow, let's put the shadow on first. 
what you want with a shadow is you want to see the color underneath because the shadow is just going to, um, you know, be an absence of light on the color underneath. And the paint is transparent, so you can make your shadows nice and transparent. So let's take our color that we had for the path here and add a bit more ultramarine blue. Because ultramarine blue is a beautiful color for shadows, really is. I'm going to add a little bit of um, burnt sienna in to just gray it up, take it down a notch so it's not so bright. Make a sort of a, a nice blue, blue gray. Blue is the complement of orange, so it's going to be lovely around the pumpkins. And let's look at our reference photo. And if you look at the reference photo, a lot of these shadows back here are, are very blue. It's really dark under the cart, so we may, may need to go a bit darker under the cart. And around the pumpkins, it's, it's pretty dark too. We don't need to go as dark as the reference photo, but definitely we need those shadows in there to make everything um, stand out. So uh, I want... To, I'm going to start with, I'm running out of space on my palette to start with some just ultramarine blue near the pumpkins and try not to be sloppy anymore, Caroline, because the blue and the orange are compliments and they'll look lovely. So let's, some, let's go around the, the pumpkins and Try not to go over the edge of them. Try and be very careful as you go around them. As you come out away from them, you can be a little less careful. And we've got to put the dark stalks on the pumpkins too. So we're coming out. Now it's really nice if you have a few um, bits of light showing through because sometimes there is, and I'm going to take my brush back into the hay bale. So I get the, the hay stalks sticking out. And these, the corn stalks are also um, reflecting. So if you just have a few places where, you want me to zoom in again, let's zoom in again, where the light's shining through, it gives some relief to the eye and just makes it more realistic. And you're going to paint around those corn and between those corn stalks. This is going to be your negative painting. I'm trying to look at my photo as well because the corn stalks are making shadows. There'll be a lot of um, negative painting between them. I'm going into my gray mix. And I'm going a little darker around those pumpkins. I'm just dropping that, that darker gray mix in around the pumpkins. So they show up a bit, a bit more bright. I'm going to use the dark gray mix under the cart because it's very dark under the cart. You can't really hardly see anything at all under there. So let's go. And again, make sure before you do this, don't be sloppy like I've been just lately. Make sure everything's dry so that you don't get any bleeding of your paint where you don't want it to bleed. Around the corn stalks and you have to be very careful to put the, the shadows where they are, not all over the place, because sometimes they're not all over the place. They're making a shape from the stalks and from the wagon. So I'm looking at my reference photo to see what's going on. A bit of a Shadow here is definitely, I'm going to have to use a smaller brush between the, the wheels. There's some um, coming out from the wheel. There's a shadow coming across here, here. And 
and down from the stalks. There's a shadow coming across here. Oh, I need my little I need my little brush to go to go in there. I add a little bit of green to the shadow color because there's a little bit of shadow on the grass, but it's not as blue, it's more green. So I'm going to put that in with, with some shadow color that has just a little bit more green in it. There's some shadows. Again, a little bit more green. There's some shadows back here too. Now, small brush, tiny brush. And I have to get some shadows in between these spokes. I have to have a look at where they are. There's some back here. A bit more of the wheel there. I'll just pull out a little bit. I'm gonna get a little bit of little bit of blue. There's some sort of shadow coming across here a little bit. And then there's some over here. I'm going to turn my, I have to turn it this way to get some of the shadow that's, I'm going to just a lighter ultramarine blue now and turn this sideways too. What I'm looking at now is this shadow across the path here. That's, that's if you look at it, it's quite ultramarine-y. I'm, I'm turning it sideways so I can see sort of where that is coming across here. And the pumpkins. Just needed to have it sort of sideways on to get get the feel for that. It's a bit broader here, here, and then of course in the background there's um, trees that I didn't quite get enough of. I don't think I just want to get um, a little bit more tree happening back here. Just smush those in a little bit with my wet brush. And I have some over here too. Just a few, few sort of trees back here. Really indistinct, but just to give an idea of some kind of background. Otherwise it looks a bit too empty. It's a wet brush to kind of smush them in. There's a couple of other little things to add. One is some of the, the dark green around the plants. 
Let's zoom, zoom in again. So I'm, I've got a number of greens here. This one is the sort of ultramarine blue and thalo green. Let's go with that, it's nice and dark. Some ultramarine blue and thalo green there. Let's grab a bit of yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. Burnt sienna always darkens up a green nicely. Sorry, I'm not in your view there. So I've got a, ni a really nice dark green. The, the dark greens around the flowers really are really dark. So I'm just going to put, again, not with, with much precision. You don't, you don't have to be too fussy about some of these. There's quite a lot, there's quite a lot of greenery sort of here too. And some kind of greenery all over here. And you don't have to put all of this in if you're not happy with that. You can you can leave it out if you prefer not to. Like I said, I'm one of those people that tends to paint almost everything I see. I try to simplify a little bit, but and I'm going to use that dark green to do some of the shadows between the the stalks and I'm also going to add it to some of the gray blue and we need to put in a few a few pumpkin stalks too just to give them some definition this around this plant here there's a little bit of greenery Pumpkin stalk. A bit more negative painting. I'm trying to see if there's anything much more. Um, it's quite quite dark over here between these two. I'm going to add some brown to that, some brown and some blue to get it a little bit more brown. Burnt sienna and some ultramarine blue because some of these little places between the corn stalks are quite dark in here. And this is sort of negative painting where you paint the um the shadows between the the light stalks very dark sort of down here and you can spend quite a bit of time if you've got the reference photo looking at those um those shapes formed in between the the really like stalks and putting them in. It's sort of a question of looking at what shape does the negative make? And then just adding a few of them. I am with a just not quite as dark a brown now. And then as you get a few of them in, it starts to take shape. And you don't—you certainly don't need to do all of them, but it helps if you do a few. And that's when I get to the point where um, I think this pumpkin definitely needs a little bit more, a little bit more shadow. And this one here needs a bit more shadow. This one here. And this one, because it's close up, you can even see the, you know, the creases on this one. So we can put a few creases in the close up ones. Just give them a little bit more shape. And then let's pull back. The thing is, when you look at them up close like that, 
you really see all the imperfections and the um, it looks a bit odd. But when you pull back, putting a couple more shadows in there, when you pull back, you see the whole picture and it looks a little less, a less weird. And um, it's the same with your own painting. If you get too close and you don't pull back and look at it once in a while, you get a little bit lost and you feel like it's not looking right. Maybe you walk away for a little while and come back later. You notice that it really does look right when you look at it as a whole. I'm just going in with the burnt sienna to make a little bit more of the shadow in there. And of course, you can always pull those um, grass, sort of grass stalks out that are there. I like it. Like I said, you can add quite a bit of detail at the end just by adding a little bit here, a little bit there. Across the top of that wagon there, um, just across here was very, very um, reflective of the the yellow in the hay bales. So I'm just going to put that on. Oh, and I forgot these two. Easy to forget things. Find my raw sienna. I've got my palette upside down now and I can't find anything because I've, here it is, I turned it upside down. There we go. I forgot these two little stalks here. I have to put on a raw sienna. So I'm going to stop now. That is mine pretty much finished, but you know, I will come back tomorrow probably. And when it's really dry, I might add just a few more details. I'm looking at it right now. And although the wheels are pretty much the same color as the photograph, I do just want, I'm, I'm putting a little bit more, a little bit more red on mine. I just, I just feel like I wanted just a bit more Bit more red, just to just a touch. Let's put a little bit on. I want that complementary red and green happening. Uh, you'll see where I had my back run here, where I was wet against wet too quickly. It's all disappeared into my shadow. It's it's not visible. When you have something go wrong with a painting, you know, don't, don't panic. Don't try and scrub it off and and um, wash it back and everything. Just just kind of dab it and leave it. It's usually fixable if you just let it dry and paint over the top of it. Even this weird bit at the end of the wagon here, is, I can disappear that in the trees, especially if I do a little bit more to the trees after this all is all dried. And if you want some lights in anything, you can always use your bleed proof white when this is really dry and just put on a few highlights, especially on some of these corn stalks here or even on the top here, if you wanted a few light strands of um, hay coming out or if you lost some of the lights in your spokes you can definitely go back with your white and a little brush and put those in afterwards anyway sorry it was a little bit of a rush at the end there but <laughs> I hope you managed to keep up and did okay I will um, stop the recording and you can ask me questions if you need to so well, how did your painting go? You may have noticed I made a few mistakes on mine and I left them in there because I'm sure you can relate to them. They were because um, I was talking while I was painting, which is a really difficult thing to do. Um, I wasn't paying attention to how wet my paint was sometimes. I made a mistake in the drawing. I don't know how, but I did. And uh, just those little things happen and uh, they happen to the best of us. And quite often it's just because you're rushing, like I was rushing and I wasn't allowing adequate drying time. And so uh, sometimes that just helps. Anyway, I hope you got your little fall wagon done. OK, we're all ready for Halloween this weekend now. And I'll see you next week for another painting. So thanks for joining me. Bye for now.